Hello, this is Bart Pastorino from Codenomicon. I'm here with Jonathan Knudsen, Principal Systems Engineer. Jonathan is going to do a technical deep dive today entitled Bluetooth Technical Deep Dive When the Music Stops. What he's going to show you is that he's going to take the Codenomicon Defensix Bluetooth Suite, connect it to his phone. His phone will be playing music, and when the system crashes, the music will stop. So I'm going to turn it over to Jonathan now to begin the demo. Thanks, Bart. Uh, I just have one slide that I'm going to show you uh, to get things kicked off. And uh, so as Bart said, this is a demonstration of Bluetooth protocol fuzzing. And the specific Bluetooth protocol is L2CAP, uh, which is the the basic, the fundamental protocol of, of any Bluetooth communications. The target we're using here is a, an Android phone, which is uh, up to date on patches. Uh, it's not a top of the line phone, so it doesn't have the very latest version of Android, but for the capabilities that it has, it has the most up to date uh, Android version. The phone, uh, you won't be able to see the phone, but fortunately there's nothing exciting to see on the phone screen. What we're going to do is we're going to monitor the, the health of the phone in two ways. And the first way is uh, I have it plugged into my computer or with a USB cable. So we're going to be able to view the uh, debug log or, or the console of the phone on the computer screen. I've included a clipping on this slide here, a news clipping. Uh, about the recent Flame malware, uh, just because uh, one of the interesting things about Flame is that it has a Bluetooth component. Uh, so I hope you'll see that this testing is, is very apropos. And what we're going to do is uh, we're sending uh, fuzz test cases, malformed L2CAP packets, to the Android target. And uh, what you're going to see is that one of those is actually going to crash the BTLD process on the phone, which is the process that runs Bluetooth on the phone. So with that said, let me take, th take you through um, what we have set up on the target. So I'm using a ADB command, which is part of the Android Developer Toolkit, in order to look at what's on the phone. And so I'm going to run this command, which uh, examines the running processes on the phone and uh, shows you if BTLD is running or not. And as you can see, uh, it is currently running. So I have Bluetooth turned on on the phone. And then I'm going to run a different command, which allows us to view the uh, event log or the, the console of the phone. And I'm just filtering that console output for stuff that's interesting for us, which is mainly uh, messages from the Bluetooth uh, uh, subsystem and from the system itself. I'm also, uh, well, so the next step is I'm going to start up Codenomicon Defensix. And Defensix is kind of a dashboard. Uh, you load the different protocol suites into it. So here's what the dashboard looks like. And as you load different suites, they show up as different tabs here. So what we are interested in today is the L2CAP protocol of Bluetooth. So I'm first going to open up the Defensix Suite browser. This shows me uh, all of the different test suites that I have installed on my computer. And of course, the particular one we want is this Bluetooth L2CAP test suite. So I'm going to load that up, uh, show up as a tab here. And I'm going to spend a little time describing what this looks like, because no matter what protocol you're fuzzing, uh, Defensix gives you a pretty uniform interface to that tool. So for any protocol, you've got these steps 1 through 8 over on the left-hand side here, which are the steps that you would follow to fuzz any target. You start out with basic configuration which most of the time is just a matter of pointing the test tool at the target. So for IP-based protocols, you would typically fill in the target IP address of the system under test. For this Bluetooth L2CAP protocol, 
we're going to fill in a Bluetooth address of the system under test. And I'll show you how that works in just a minute. The next step would be interoperability testing, which we're going to look at in detail. But the idea here is you want to make sure that your test tool can talk to the target successfully before you start sending fuzzed inputs at the target. And then uh, there's test cases we'll also look at. Uh, our tool, Defensix, generates thousands, hundreds of thousands, sometimes millions of test cases that uh, each of which will get sent separately to the target. And this test cases view allows you to browse through and select the ones that you want. And then the test run, of course, is pretty self-explanatory. And we're going to spend some time later uh, talking about how to browse through the results of the test run and how to create a remediation package to send to your developers so that they can fix any problems that you found. So let's start off with the first step, which is we want to point this test tool at our target. And because it's Bluetooth, uh, we've got a little utility here, a Bluetooth scanner. So we'll kick this off, and it's going to find all of the available Bluetooth devices uh, in my little local area here. So it found two. Uh, one of them is the phone itself, which is this top one. And the second Bluetooth device it found is my laptop, which is here. So I'm going to select the phone, because that's what we want to fuzz, and say OK. And really all it did was just um, put that Bluetooth MAC address into the target address here. And that's all we need to do. We can use all of the default values for the other configuration settings. And at this point, we're ready to move on to the interoperability step. Interoperability serves two purposes. The first one, as I said, is that you want to make sure you can have a good conversation with your target uh, before you start sending the weird stuff. And the second reason you do interoperability testing is you're trying to find out what features of a protocol are supported by the target. Sometimes protocol features are optional. And so if the target doesn't implement them, you don't want to waste time testing them. So I'm going to press the probe button here, and it's going to send valid inputs to my target and look for valid replies. And if the exchange is successful, you get a green bar. If Defensix is not quite sure if the thing succeeded or not, you get a yellow one. Uh, and that would be if you sent a message that, where you're not expecting a reply. And then things that did not work out right are in red. And so this, you can see we've got uh, fundamental interoperability in the L2CAP protocol. And uh, that's good enough for me. So we're going to go ahead and select test cases and do a test run. If I go down to test cases here, it says um, we're going to reconfigure the suite based on the supported features. And so it does that. And uh, you can see in our default configuration, we've got about 9,000 test cases. That's configurable. You can ask Defensix to create more if you want, depending on the level of testing you want to do and the available time that you have. Now, I've done this before, and I know that there's a failure uh, in these test cases. So I'm going to start. Uh, instead of running from test case number one and going up, I'm going to start in the middle somewhere so that we get to the failure. And now we're almost ready for the test run. Now, uh, I mentioned before that uh, we've got this console window so we can see output from the phone as the tests are running. And that's going to be pretty interesting to look at. Uh, but we're also going to open a Bluetooth connection and play music over it so that when the Bluetooth process goes down, uh, the music's going to stop. And that'll give us uh, one more way of uh, monitoring the phone to see if it's still healthy or not. So there's the music. I'm going to kick off this test run. And at the same time, I'm going to monitor the console of the phone over here. In Defense 6, we've got this heartbeat monitor here, which essentially puts out a blip every time we send out a fuzz test case. And over on the console here, you can see that Android's BTLD process is putting out uh, warnings and complaining about uh, 
packets that are too long and, and other odd things. And this makes a lot of sense because we are sending malformed data from the test tool to the target. In Defensix, we keep track of how many test cases you've run, how many have passed and failed, and uh, we also calculate an average test cases per second speed. Using that and knowing how many remaining test cases we have, we can approximately calculate the remaining time for this test suite. So you can see here it's hovering around 35 minutes. And so there's the magic. You can hear my music stopped. And over on the console, we've got some pretty awful looking stuff. So I'm going to scroll back up to show you what happened. Uh, we, we were getting these warnings from BTLD, and that's fine. And then we got down to this stuff here with all the stars. It says buffer corrupted, and here's a SIG seg B. This is the system bin BTLD process going down. So it dumps out all the registers, and it uh, gives you a stack trace, and the process uh, is dead. And just to prove it to you, uh, I'm going to execute that command uh, again to look for that BTLD process running, and there's nothing. It's gone. Over in Defensix, uh, you can see the progress bar turned red, and we've got this flashing red thing up here, and it says the system under test has failed. So that's the dramatic part of the demo. Now let's look at the part where, having found a failure, you want to communicate this failure to your development team or to your vendor so that they can uh, find it, they can reproduce it, and fix it. So we're going to look at step seven, which is results. And what I'm going to show you here is uh, this red folder here represents the test run that we just performed. And there are two ways of looking at these test results. The first one is this statistics view, which has one line for every uh, test case that we sent to the target. And of course, uh, the last one that we were able to send uh, is marked as failed. If I click on this line, it will show me what that test case looks like. So this is the uh, packet, the message that we sent to the target, and highlighted in pink is the uh, the field that was anomalized, it's the field that we intentionally messed up that caused the failure in the target. The other way we can look at results is the main log, which is something like looking through uh, a Wireshark capture. So I'm going to right click in the statistics view and say show this test case in the main log and it'll switch over and we can see exactly what happened. So here is test case number 5119 starting. Here is uh, an outgoing message that we sent to the target. And here are three messages that we got back from the target. And here's another message we sent out. And then here's the one that has the anomaly in it. So uh, this shows you how nice it is to have a model-based fuzzer, something that understands the protocol, because it can send and receive messages, valid messages, uh, or indefinitely until it is ready to deliver its anomalous message. And this means that you can get really good code coverage on the implementation. So we sent the anomaly, we sent a couple more things, uh, and then Defensix tried to do something called instrumenting, which is to check on the health of the target. So it sent uh, a valid input and looked for a valid output, but of course, we never received a response from the target because the Bluetooth process was dead on the target. So it tried that repeatedly until we stopped the test run. So now we have a really good picture of what happened. How do we tell developers about it so that they can fix this problem? Defensix uses something called a remediation package for this. And it's really just a zip file. So what we're going to do is uh, add our test results in and save this remediation package and then I'm going to um, I'm going to switch gears and show you what it would look like from the developers perspective to get one of these remediation packages. 
So the first thing we want to do is add in the test results from the test run we just did. And those are from the L2 cap suite. And here are the test results. So I'm going to add those in. And it just adds all of the raw files. Next, all I want to do is save this remediation package. Like I said, it's just a zip file. So I'm just going to give it a name and save it on my desktop. So from the developer's perspective, uh, let's go take a look at that and see what it looks like. So this is the one we just saved. It has raw results here. And if we go into those, you can see them. And it also has a Word document at the top level, which is an automatically generated report. So let's take a look at what that looks like. This report has overall information about the test run itself. So it tells us when we started, uh, how long we took, and uh, how many test cases passed and how many failed. And then if we scroll down, it has information about how to interpret the information in the report. And if we scroll down far enough, it lists out every test case that failed. So here's number 5119, some information about the test case itself, and then finally the field level breakdown of the message that caused the problem. This is really useful, and based on the information in this report alone, a developer, a developer could probably go and fix the bug. But even better would be if the developer can actually run the same test case and reproduce the same problem. Defensix has a workflow for this. So if the developer is running Defensix, he or she will go to the File menu and choose Import Remediation Package and they'll go and navigate to that remediation package that you gave them. And it just imports those results in that report. It tells you what it imported, and you can see it puts it into a, a special directory in the, the Defensix results directory. So if I'm a developer, I've got, uh, I've got this import directory. And if I go into L2 cap and look at, I, I can look at the results exactly the same way that we were just doing before. So here's the statistics view with the case that failed all the way at the end. And here's what it looks like in the main log again. So as a developer, I'm able to look at these test results in exactly the same way that the tester was able to. And furthermore, I can uh, load up the same settings for this test suite and rerun the exact same test cases. This is really powerful because if I'm a developer, I want to run my code in a debugger or with any other tools that will help me find and diagnose the problem. And so I can do, get that all set up and then use Defensix to rerun the test cases that caused the problem for the tester and that should make it really easy to pinpoint the problem and fix it. So that's, uh, that's the end of what I wanted to say. Uh, basically, we used Defensix to cause a problem in a, a Bluetooth target, and then we're able to make a remediation package based on that failure uh, that makes it pretty simple for a development team to fix a problem. So. Thank you very much for listening, and uh, back to you, Bart. Thanks, Jonathan. To summarize, you've seen Jonathan conduct a Bluetooth technical deep dive when the music stops. He showed the Konamicon Defensix Bluetooth suite to crash the system under a test and showed you how to package up the results for developers to remediate. To find out more about Konamicon protocol fuzzing suites or to find out more specifically about the Bluetooth suite, please contact us at info at codenomicon.com.